guys welcome back to tech dose and in this video we will look at the maximum matrix sum problem which is from lead code number 1975 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem you are given an n by n integer matrix you can do the following operation any number of times so you can choose any two adjacent element of the matrix and multiply each of them by minus one two elements are considered adjacent if and only if they share a border your goal is to maximize the summation of the matrix's elements and we need to return the maximum sum of the matrix's elements using the operation mentioned above. Now before looking at the example, let's look at the constraint. In this case, we are mentioned n value less than equals to 250 and the matrix will be of dimension n by n. Now let's look at an example for better understanding. In this case, let's say that our given array is 2, minus 3, minus 1 and 5, which is of dimension 2 by 2. Now our goal is given an n by n matrix we need to perform the operation any number of times and the operation is you can multiply two adjacent numbers by minus one and the adjacency will go only in four directions either up right down or left. So if you have chosen this minus one to be multiplied then you can choose this minus one and five to be multiplied or minus one with two right and on the left side there is no element on the downside there is no element otherwise you would have tried that so each number can have four possibilities here the second thing is uh, we can do it any number of times right and we need to do it in four directions we need to return the maximum sum of the matrix elements after doing this operation any number of times so in this given array if you think about doing the operation then i will pick this minus one and five and I can just multiply them with minus 1 so that this negative will be removed and here you will get a negative. Now 2 and 1 are positive while minus 3 minus 5 are negative. So you can just choose this minus 3 and uh, minus 5 and multiply them with minus 1 again and this uh, negative values will be removed. So in this case all the numbers will become positive. So the final uh, sum will be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 5 which will be 5 plus 3, 8 plus 2, 10 plus 1, 11. So 11 will be our final answer because we were able to remove all the negative values, right? So we cannot get any value greater than 11. Hence, this is the answer. I hope the problem statement is clear. Now, in order to solve this problem, we have a lot of observations to be made here. Let's look at the first observation. If our matrix had all the positive values, then don't you think that the sum will always be the sum of all the elements? Because since all the elements are positive, the maximum uh, sum of the matrix will be just adding all the values and you can return 10 in this case, right? Which is 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6 plus 4, 10. The second observation is, if we have two adjacent negatives, then it will always cancel out if you choose them and multiply by minus 1. So if you choose this minus 3, minus 4 and multiply them with minus 1, then you will get a value 3 and you will get a value 4. Okay, and again the sum will be equals to 10. The third observation is, the negative sign can travel. So if you look at this matrix 3 by 3, then here uh, minus 8 is a negative value while all the others are positive value. Now, if you choose this minus 8 and, my, uh, and 9, then if you multiply this with minus 1, then this negative will be removed and here you will get a negative. Okay, so the minus sign can travel. So if minus sign can travel, then you, you can move minus sign to any number. And since you want to maximize the sum, Therefore, you will move the minus sign to such a value which has the lowest absolute value. That means I want the negative at 1. If I cannot remove this minus, then I will move it to 1. How you can do that? Now you can multiply this minus 9 and 6 with minus 1. So this negative will be removed. Here you will get a negative. You can multiply minus 1 uh, with 3 and minus 6. So this negative is being transferred to minus 3. Again, the same take 2 and minus 3 multiply with minus 1 here you get a minus 2 and take 1 and minus 2 multiply with minus 1 and you get minus 1 here so the negative has traveled and you can just make it move to any number so i will be making it move to the smallest number possible right so in this case if i remove this one then the sum will be equals to you add up all these numbers except for this minus 1 so this will be 2 plus 3 plus 4 and so on plus 9 which will be equals to 44 and then from this 44, you have to subtract this negative value, which will be minus 1. So the answer will be 43 in this case, right? So I hope you got this observation number 3. Now moving on to the next observation. The negative sign can travel and cancel with another negative sign present at any place. So what if in our 3 by 3 matrix, I have a minus 8 and minus 3. 
then these two negative signs can cancel out because I know that the negatives can travel. So you can make this minus 8's negative travel or minus 3's travel. You can just pick minus 8 and 9 and multiply with minus 1. Again pick 6 and min uh, minus 9, multiply with minus 1 and pick this minus 3 and minus 6 and multiply with minus 1. So in this case, you got all the positive numbers and therefore the sum will be from 1 to 9, it will be equals to 45. Therefore, using this, we can conclude that the pairs of negatives always cancel out. I don't care where they are present, but they will always cancel out. So in this matrix 3 by 3 size, you see we have 3 negatives. But we can make a pair of negative cancel out. We can make this uh, minus 2 and 3 and multiply this with minus 1. And so this negative will be moving to minus 3. Again, pick minus 3 and minus 6, multiply with minus 1. So this negative will be removed. Now there is only one negative in the entire matrix. Therefore, we know that we have to make this travel to the smallest possible element. So this will be traveling to this minus 1. And therefore, the sum in this case will be the sum from 2 to 9, which will be equals to 44 and subtract this value, which will be minus 1. So 43 is the answer. Therefore, only one negative value will remain only if we have odd number of negative values. Otherwise, if we have even number of negative values, then the pair of negative values will always cancel out with each other, right? So the negatives will only have any impact if they are in odd count. Okay, we can remove all the pair of negative values isn't it in the next observation if we have a zero in the matrix then all the negatives will get cancelled out if we have even number of negatives odd number of negatives it does not matter let's say that we have this minus three you can always pick this minus three and six and multiply with minus one pick this minus six and zero and multiply with minus one so zero multiplied with minus one will still remain to be zero so uh, we have removed the negative from the minus three right Again, we can do the same for this minus 4. We can pick minus 4, 7. Negative will travel. Again, negative will travel. And again, if you multiply, then uh, I mean, 0 will remain as 0 and 8 will become positive. So all the numbers can become positive, right? So if you have at least one zero, you can have more zeros. But if you have at least one zero, then the negatives will be lost, whether they are even count or odd count. It will not matter. So after looking at all of the observations, we can conclude that if a matrix has at least one zero, then the sum will be the sum of all the elements which will be taken as an absolute value because you can remove all the negatives. Otherwise, if a matrix has even count of negatives, then you know that the pair of negatives can get cancelled out and therefore the sum in this case will also be sum of all the absolute elements of the given matrix, right? But if a matrix do not have a zero and if the matrix has odd uh, negative counts then in this case the sum will be equals to you first add up all the elements of the given matrix and then subtract the smallest absolute element because you can move one single negative to the smallest element possible right as we have seen because even if you have five negatives you know that pair of negatives will get cancelled out so two pairs will get cancelled out. You will always be left with one negative, right? And if you have even count of negatives, then you we know that all the pairs will get cancelled out. And so we simply return the sum of the matrix. So from this conclusion, we can arrive at our final uh, result where let's take our first example of a three by three matrix. Here we have three negatives, minus four, minus six and minus eight. So we can make this uh, make these values cancel out. So this will become minus 9 and this uh, will make this entire thing as positive and we will be left with only one negative. So I'll make this negative go to the smallest number possible, right? And once we are done with this, then we know that the entire sum of the array is 45, including this absolute of minus 1 as well. So this one is getting counted, okay? So this entire sum is 45. The minimum value out of this entire matrix is this one right when we take the absolute values the count of negative values is three that means it is hitting the second case where we have odd negative count right so when we have odd negative count then we know that the entire sum of the matrix that is 45 will be uh, subtracted two times from this one why two times because while finding the sum we added it one time right but it needs to be subtracted one time actually so therefore the gap is two times so two times of one which will give me 43 as a result okay now if you look at the second example where again i have uh, three negative values but we have a zero as well so you know that if you have at least one zero then the entire numbers will become positive because each of the negative can be removed by moving the negative value to zero 
but in this case let's say that uh, we pick minus 1 minus 2 and we just multiply with minus 1 so they both become positive and we pick minus 3 and 0 and I multiply with minus 1 so this becomes 3 so in this case the count of negative is 3 the sum value is 6 sum of all the elements in the array when you take absolute of all the values the minimum value is 0 so if you follow the previous uh, technique that I will subtract 2 times the minimum value from the given sum then it will be equals to 6 minus 2 times of 0 which will be equals to 6 so now we know when the negative count is odd then what to do if it is even then simply return the sum as an answer right so in this entire case we will be traversing the entire matrix exactly one time and the matrix dimension is n by n therefore the time complexity will be order of n square and the space complexity is order of one let us now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the matrix so i'll find the number of rows and columns and i'll be taking minimum value initialized with integer maximum I want to minimize this value i am taking a counter for the negative values and i am taking a sum variable i will be iterating for each row and each column and for every element i will just be calculating the sum by adding the absolute of the given element i will be trying to minimize the element so whenever i try to minimize the element i just remove the sign of it okay because if any negative sign is present then i will move it to the uh, smallest possible value right and that is why i am tracking the smallest value by taking absolute otherwise if you don't take absolute then minus 50 will become a uh, minimum value as you compare it with minus 1 but i wanted to uh, take minus 1 as the minimum value right and i will be counting uh, for the negative if the value is negative i'll do count negative plus plus these are the cases if the count negative is even then i will be simply returning the sum if it is odd then i'll be returning sum minus 2 into minimum value so i hope uh, this problem was clear if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming video see you guys in the next video thank you